welcome Julie. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to briefly try to summarize your career. So I remember we first met in 2016. Uh, you were quite new in Instagram at that stage. And Just joined the company. Yeah, and, and so, so were we on, on Instagram as well. And I'm glad now that we are, we are ranked among the top four business schools on Instagram, thanks to your advice. So thank you for that. One more thing to do, if you don't follow the Instagram account of Schema, you have to right now. And you have to download the app if you don't have it, because otherwise you will be out of the, out of the room. I love the call to action. OK. Yeah. OK. Um, so a few words about you, Julie. So you joined what was named Sarah at that stage. Uh, so Sarah in 2005. Uh, and I've got some pictures that I'm not going to share tonight, uh, but you were a, a very high-level athlete. Maybe I was a less bigger. Yeah, <laughs> less bigger. High-level athlete, and I, I heard that in karate you, you were third at the university championship. So I, I'm, I'm very cautious in what I'm about to say because I don't want to be it. Uh, and you were involved as a vice president at the same time, I heard, in a sport association, in a student association. Yes, so my two favorite associations. Okay, so when, when were you learning at that, at that time? Good I was question. learning by doing things. Okay. Which was um, I heard also you are very dynamic in the school, very involved, uh, and you graduated in 2009. Yes. And then your career began. <coughs> uh, so after a few experiences, you joined Facebook in 2010, smart move, uh, as a business developer for France. Then you moved to Southeast Asia to open the, the first uh, Facebook office in Sydney, uh, no, Singapore, sorry, in 2012, then in Australia in 2013. Nice move. Came back to France before joining Instagram in 2016. Nice career, but she will talk about her career afterwards, and if you have any question about that, she will be more than happy to answer. So your job at the moment, but you will explain that further on to us, is to develop the brand and help companies to use, uh, how can I say, in a smart way, Instagram, uh, to develop their brand and communication. And you're in charge of that for France and Southern Europe. And people who follow you on the social network and see you moving from one country to another <coughs> on a regular basis. I have to say also that one of your passion, if you follow Julie on, on Instagram, is surf. And, and you are sharing beautiful pictures on a regular basis. Maybe we'll try to move next time to do the conference over there. Uh, so Instagram today, uh, more than 800 million users, maybe more. I don't, know, I don't have maybe the last figure. 800 million is good. Uh, obviously, it's a, a key element <coughs> of any communication strategy uh, for a brand, for a company. Um, a few examples I noticed recently. You have restaurants who are which are designing special rooms or who are thinking about the design of their restaurants based on Instagram to make sure that when you take a picture of the plate, it will look great. So that's very, very impressive. And you even opened uh, recently in France the first pop-up store with brands fully created through Instagram, which is very impressive. So you're going to explain, you, you are going to explain us all, all of this. Um, Julie told me that the presentation she's going to deliver you is like she's talking to companies. And the idea is to see how can we advise companies on how to use Instagram when you want to communicate. Obviously, if you have any question about your own use of Instagram after the, the, the speech, you can do it uh, easily. Uh, and I even read that you are about to uh, launch video and audio calls on Instagram. Is it true or is it a buzz? Mm -hmm. you do, you're not going to answer, I guess. Okay, Julie, so. some secret. Okay, so the floor is yours for 15 to 20 minutes. And then, questions. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, to be joining me at this conference. I'm a bit, uh, like, uh, impressed because, uh, for me, like, uh, I graduated in 2000, uh, 2009. And I was saying to Benoit that, Coming back, for me here is like, if I was, uh, I don't know, it was like two years ago that I've been graduated, and I realized that it's already nine years, so I'm feeling a bit old. So thank you, actually, for um, uh, welcoming uh, me here. So my job is to talk about uh, Instagram and to talk about Instagram to brands to make sure that they understand the opportunity uh, for them. So if you are studying marketing or if you are studying how can brands can develop their presence and make sure that they are reaching the audience. If you are planning to be an entrepreneur and you want to launch your brand, I think it's definitely some advice that uh, you can uh, think about how you can help uh, those brands to, uh, to evolve and use Instagram. Of course, I'm sure that there are maybe other people that may be not doing this kind of uh, marketing uh, 
uh, courses. So don't hesitate after if you want me to answer also any career uh, question or advice. I would be super happy to, uh, to answer those questions as well. So the first thing that uh, we are doing when we are presenting at Instagram is to present ourselves with our images from our account. So yes, you can see that I love doing surfing, I love to travel, I love the blue color. Uh, and one reason we are doing this is because we really think about the power of images. So I prepared a test for you. So I know we are on VC and it, maybe not everybody will be able to play, but I hope everybody here in Paris will answer to that. So are you ready? Yes. <laughs> What have you seen on the screen? A van. Which color? Blue. Blue. The roof? White. Have you seen like the brand of the van? Volkswagen. What was in the background? Trees. So have you seen all the details that you have been able to see in less than 10 milliseconds? It's crazy. So that's why we are st strongly believing in the power of images. And one of the reasons is like, when you have an images, you don't need to speak, you don't need to um, know the language. And so it's like international communication. You can be based in China or in France, you will understand what uh, the image means. The second thing that we are strongly believing is the power of mobile. I'm pretty sure that 100% of you have a mobile a smartphone. Am I wrong? Is anyone doesn't have a smartphone today? No, nobody. So we strongly believe in the power of mobile because today, when you have a mobile, you are actually a photographer. So how many of you have taken a picture in the last 24 hours? Yes, a lot of people, of course. We are taking a lot of pictures. So when you have a smartphone, on average, you are taking 150 pictures a month. Is there any woman under 25 years old here? Not me, yes, the lucky girls here. Thank you, mademoiselle. <laughs> so when you're a girl under 25 years old, on average, you're taking 250 pictures a month. So it's a lot of content. And when we are taking so much content, it's to share it. And of course, Instagram is one of the platforms where you are sharing it, because it's a platform that is 100% visual and 100% mobile. Do you know the two guys on this screen? I don't know if you know them. Yes, Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger, they are the two co-founders of Instagram. So they co-founded Instagram in 2010. In 2012, Facebook bought Instagram, but these two guys, they are still leading the company. So we are still having this, um, Instagram is still kind of an independent company inside the Facebook group. So it's helping us to drive the vision and the mission of the company and being able to, uh, to develop different products. So I show you what is uh, Instagram look like today. So I don't remember, I don't know if you remember how many people um, were using Instagram maybe, I don't know, three, four years ago where you were just taking a picture and adding a filter to have better pictures. I Me, mean, I was a very bad photographer before joining Instagram, so I tried to improve. But before we were using Instagram for that, today we're actually not taking any pictures, we're taking a lot of video content. We are sharing this content with different communities, we are using hashtag, we are discovering trends. So a lot of things are happening on Instagram. But one of the big moves and big changes that we have done is actually the launch of stories. So you know, the fact that you can share ephemeral <coughs> content. Some people will say that we copied Snapchat, and will say that we've been inspired by Snapchat. 
but today you have the opportunity to not only uh, share some content that will uh, last on the platform, but some content that will stay only 24 hours. And this is a big opportunity and it's a big change for our users because actually they are creating more and more content because it's easier to share this and to not uh, put some limits on the kind of content that uh, you are sharing on the platform. So, this is, and I will talk a lot about uh, stories because it's an opportunity for you, your use, your own use of Instagram, but also for the brands on how they engage with their um, audience in this uh, area. So overall, and you say that, 800 million people on the platform every month that are coming, 500 million that are coming back every day. So it means that it's not like Instagram is not anymore the little sister of Facebook. Today you have a very big audience, so it's an opportunity for brands to be reaching this audience in this platform like they can do on print or on uh, TV. So they are an opportunity to reach this audience. And the big number that is super interesting and that has to change also the way that how brands are interacting with the audience is stories. We've launched stories one year and a half ago and we already have more than 300 million connecting to um, uh, stories every day. So it's a huge number and so it means that we need to think how we can improve uh, using this, uh, this space. So why people are coming to Instagram? First reason, because they love uh, passions and they want to connect to the community members that are sharing the same passions as them. So it's a very big uh, um, interest. The second thing is because it's a creative platform. So if you want to follow some inspiring account or if you want to follow people that are artistic and you want to, to uh, come back every day to be inspired, you will uh, um, follow and discover those accounts on Instagram. The other reason why people are coming is because of celebrities. They are coming because celebrities are sharing, yes, we can love, and <laughs> David Beckham, when he launched his account, actually, in less than 24 hours, he had more than 1 million uh, followers. But do you know who beat this record? It's a question for you. A celebrity. Kardashian. It's not them. Will Smith? No. He's from EME. He's from Europe. I don't know if it's from Europe, but it's based in Europe. No, Allez, I'm going to pop. <laughs> the pop, in less than 12 hours, he got more than 1 million followers. So, you know, any kind of celebrities can have his presence <coughs> on Instagram and be able to engage with their, with their followers. And when we're talking about business, it's also a place for businesses. And businesses are actually doing a lot of things on Instagram. There are already more than 25 million accounts that change their profile in business profile. So we have more um, businesses, but when we are really uh, talking about uh, businesses that are using all our different tools, uh, there are already 25 uh, million uh, uh, businesses. And it's also a place for entrepreneurs. We are seeing more and more entrepreneurs actually launching their brand on Instagram. And that's why last year we built this uh, event in France, particularly because we have a lot of entrepreneurs and it was Le Salon des Instapreneurs. So it was to celebrate these entrepreneurs that are launching their business thanks to Instagram. And we have done this big event in Paris. So we are really considering those brands to be part of our community member and so we are do developing tools for them to be able to scale their business and make sure that they have uh, results. One thing that we know is uh, businesses are adding value to our user. If you think about other platforms, sometimes you're annoyed about seeing business, you don't want to follow them, you're like, okay, it's my space. But actually on Instagram, 80% of our community members are following a brand. It means that it's their choice to actually be connecting to brands and to discover what they are doing. We know that 60% of them have already learned about a new product or services and 75% of them take an action. It means going to a website or downloading an application or going to a boutique to make an action. So it's creating a lot of opportunities for us to help brands, to help them to do their storytelling and tell what they have to, uh, to say to their audience, but also supporting them to sell more and to do some story selling. So for that, I think what is important to understand for a brand, and if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to develop your, your brand, is how do you use everything that exists on Instagram to do it? So this is one of my job and the job of the people that are working with me to make them understand all the solution. So you are taking this example because it's a great uh, example on how you launch a campaign or how you launch a brand on Instagram. So here on the left side, you can see that it's an organic content. So it means that it's a post made on the business account of the brand. And you can see that it's actually a regram from maybe 
one customer that uh, send a picture with the product. Then these brands will use stories to share a moment. So here if for, it's for the ski opening season, uh, sharing a moment, maybe inspiring people to go uh, to ski, but they are still showcasing that product. So it's another way to present their product. And then on the right side, they will do some advertising to really target the people that they want uh, to reach and make sure that they are actually engaging and going to their website to buy some, um, some content. So the overall uh, strategy here is like when you're a brand, you want to use all the different solutions and make sure that you're engaging with your, with your audience where they are on Instagram. So one thing that we are doing as an advice for the brands that want to develop on Instagram is how they can connect to passions because people are coming here to uh, connect to the center of interest. <laughs> I give you an example for you to understand better. When you're on Facebook, most of the people that you're connecting to are people that you know in real life. Maybe your friends, your family, your, your friends at school, people that you met at a party, but it's people that you know physically. On Instagram, 50% of the people that we are connecting to, you don't know them, you never met them. So you are connecting to them because you are inspired or you are connecting through a common center of interest. And so you want to, um, to uh, know better what they are doing. So it, we know how people are connecting to themselves through this center of interest and we know a lot of things. So for example, we know that one in three people on Instagram are connecting to a sports account. Sport, it's a big topic on Instagram. So brands will think how they can engage with this audience when they have, for example, big sport events like the Olympic Games. So here, Vinger Media have nothing to do with sports, but they are um, most of the time doing some marketing campaign, maybe also with other medias, but they will use also Instagram and use some unique code uh, of Instagram to engage with their audience. We were talking about restaurant and foodista. Is there any foodista? There are always foodista in the room. Yes. <laughs> I love the foodista community. Because first, we are discovering great restaurants or great food, food trends because of you. But another thing is, you, like the foodista community actually um, reveal and created a new way of taking photography of uh, food. So it's really inspiring and we're seeing how this is uh, expanding uh, even um, uh, uh, Externally, like not only on Instagram, but on other platforms. So we are seeing brands that now are developing specific food products based uh, on, uh, like, uh, to encourage people to take pictures of this and post it on Instagram. So this is an example from Sonic. It's a, a fast food uh, in, uh, in the US, and they created a milkshake, a squared milkshake, to make sure that people can actually take a photo on Instagram. And they launched this during Coachella. And if you were seeing uh, this ad on your, um, on your uh, Instagram feed, you take a screenshot and you could go to have a finished check to be able to post it again. So you see how brands are now taking into consideration the fact that people are sharing content and they want people uh, to be able to take pictures of their food. I give you another example here from McDonald's. McDonald's in Poland, they take the insight that when people are hungry, maybe it's your case tonight, you are seeing food everywhere. And at the same time, on Instagram, we are seeing more and more content creators that are using these pitted images to recreate one uh, image, so we are naming it a photo combo. So they took these creative ideas and they, they developed the entire ad campaign using this. So using an iconic product from McDonald's, using a, a product from the real life, and developing the entire marketing campaign. And when they have been uh, doing this, they have been targeting millennials in Poland and they have a crazy result with this campaign. So using some great insight, great targeting, but also using some creativity that is um, uh, from uh, the, the committee member is working super well. And I give you a last example on the passions. Beauty, we have a lot of beauty stars on Instagram. When they're coming to Instagram, they want to be inspired, but they're also taking action. And so we are seeing more and more new brands, like small brands, startup, developing their product for the community member of Instagram and actually becoming a big challenger of the biggest brands that we know, like L'Oreal. So I don't know if you know Glossier, but it's a super brand to follow on Instagram. They are super imaginative and super creative. But we are also seeing big brands starting to do research on what are the latest trends 
that they can come up and they, they can develop some products. So here L'Oréal, they did a lot of research on the new ephemeral color for hair and they actually launched their uh, Colorista uh, product. So how community members and community trends can also inspire brands to change and to launch new products. Second thing is the thing video. Video are rising on Instagram, so it's not only a photo uh, app. Now we are doing a lot of uh, video and we are seeing people are spending more time watching video versus last year, but also all our users are creating four times more video every day. So this is a huge number, so it means that our users are uh, developing videos, so it means that brands, they have also an opportunity to develop content on this platform. So I just give you an example because I think it's super important that you can also use it for you when you are doing video, but when you are in a mobile environment and Instagram, everything is on mobile, what you want to do is stop the thumb of the people that are scrolling down you know, their feed. So you want them to stop on your content to be able to consume them. So we have a few advice for brands as well, but if you could apply it for you on how do you create uh, some uh, content video for uh, the Instagram feed. So the first thing is how do you capture attention quickly? It means that in your video, you have to have an action or someone appearing in the first seconds. Otherwise, people will just scroll down because your video is too long uh, to start. The second thing is designing without sound because when we are in a conference like this or when you are in a train, most of the time you are not activating the sound. So it means that sound is a bonus. Does not mean that it's not important, but it should have it should be a bonus. But you need to think on how can you pass your message without the sound to be uh, activated, like in this video, for example. And the last thing is from your story. It means that how can you use best the screen? So having some square content or vertical content, it's much better. It's uh, working uh, much more because you are taking the entire screen versus having only landscape uh, video. So this is the kind of argument and the, the kind of uh, advice that we are working with creative agency as well to help brands to better develop content for their audience. So I'll show you a few examples here. If you watch this, this uh, campaign from Apple, on your mobile screen, you have the feeling that actually your arms are on the video. So it's a great example about thinking about this video uh, content in a mobile environment. Here, a campaign from uh, Hermes, luxury brands, they used to do a lot of things. Here, you just want to watch again and again this video because you want to know how to do this check. So, thinking about the short video as well, it's a very good uh, advice. Hyperlapse, I don't know if you know this application. It's an application that we launched maybe four years ago where you can take one minute video and reduce the time to, uh, to 10 seconds. So, you have an accelerated uh, way of watching the video. The example on the right from Herschel, it's actually a very good example on how in 10 seconds you can ju just showcase the space in your bag and pass your message. Boomerang, I'm sure you all do boomerang, so I will pass through this one. Looping in the feed, the video are looping, it means that they are never ending. So again, it's another way to have kind of a hypnotical um, uh, effect. And so thinking about what is the first screen of your video and what is the last screen to have this uh, looping effect. And the last example that I really love is brands that are going a bit further and playing with the screen, with the mobile screen. So here, example from Netflix with uh, Stranger Things, you have the, f the feeling that your screen is breaking. And this other example from Volvo, where they encourage the user to put their thumb on the screen. Actually, you don't have any effect on the video, but you still have the feeling that you are the one driving. So. It's how can we engage and do more interaction when we are developing campaign for the user to make sure that we are actually remembering um, the brand. So last pillar for me, and then I stop talking. I'm sorry about that. Too. Last one is great for story. I was seeing that stories is a huge change on Instagram. We are seeing more and more people uh, using stories, 300 million uh, people per day. So. One of our mission for us is how do we create more creative tools for our users, of course, but also for the brands to be able to create content in this uh, environment. So, of course, you can do a boomerang, you can mention someone, you can put some uh, external link, you can use some um, face filter, you can do creepy video with this super zoom. I don't know if you use this, but 
I have some colleagues that do um, every day super Zoom. It's not so uh, nice. But um, every month, we are trying to launch new, um, new uh, solution and new creative tools and uh, new stickers. And one of the stickers that uh, we launched at the end of last year was the poll sticker. I don't know if you use it. The fact that you can ask a question and uh, answer to it with uh, two different answers. So we've learned a lot from this uh, launch because actually it's the first time that people can interact and not having a passive consumption of the content, but having, having an active consumption. So for brands, it's also a way to get some answer and to be able to engage better with their, um, with their audience. Of course, live is a bigger thing. So I show you two creative um, examples from users that can inspire also brands to do it. So we were talking about splitted images. This guy, Stefan McMenany, is doing a lot of combo photo. So when he's doing his stories, he will do exactly the same concept, but in stories, or he will use all the drawing tools to actually uh, make interactive uh, content. So it's a great uh, account to follow. I'm sorry for this one, but it's a funny one. This other account, Pablo Rocha, I don't know if you know this Instagrammer, but super creative as well. And in stories, what he's trying to recreate is uh, to play, like he's trying to hack the stories uh, ecosystem and to play and to engage the audience to interact. So here, we have a video where you have uh, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth of Marine Monroe moving. And he's encouraging uh, the user to tap and hold with their thumb on the screen to actually place in the right way um, uh, the, the face. So this kind of interaction is helping brands also to think out of the box and how they can um, use this kind of example. So here, a few more examples. The more I tap, the more I draw this uh, small bear, mustard. I don't know exactly what it is. And the last one, the more I tap, the more this little dog is going away. So this is creative example that can inspire, like from the community member, that can inspire actually the brands to go further. And it's working because on Instagram, 50% of the brands that are here are actually using stories uh, during the last month. So it means that more and more brands are doing stories. And one third of the most viewed video on Instagram, on stories, sorry, are actually from brands. So brands understand the value of being in this um, environment. And the big difference that we have versus the field is that no, the sound is on for 60% of the videos that are playing in stories. So it means that here, people are consuming more content with the sound on, maybe because there is more interviews and there are more content that you need the sound. So for brands, it's also an opportunity to interact in a different way in this uh, space. So what are the main things that they are doing on, uh, on stories? Of course, when you have a shooting photo or an event, brands are sharing what's happening in the backstage and it's very different on what they were doing in their field. So you can discover other content. We are seeing more and more how-to videos or tuto videos. We are seeing uh, uh, brands using the agery or their um, celebrities uh, to be able to do some takeover of their account. And we are seeing more brands using stories as an interactive place. So here as those, they upload 10 pictures of uh, shoes with a different angle and it's actually the user tapping right or tapping left that is moving uh, the content. So again, we, have in a, we are in an active consumption of the content and not in a passive consumption. So I'll show you a last example showing this well. This example from Bacardi that is using story to reproduce a music experience. And so each story is actually a different sound. So when you're going in this space, when you tap right or you tap left, you can actually mix the sound. So it's another example how you can create an experience instead of only sending a message and having a passive consumption of your content. So this is to conclude uh, on my presentation on all the things that the brands are doing and uh, how we are giving them some advice to be better and to be performant and helping them to reach uh, their business objective. I will just finish with that. And I think it's also maybe what you were saying about the restaurant, about encouraging people to have 
uh, to share some content and so having a good design in product but it's the same when you're developing some content good design is good business so it's really important and especially on Instagram to think about that the other important thing is we all become or became a media so you if you have a like a, if you have an account on Instagram or in any other social media platform we all have a voice so a brand is not competing only with other brands is actually competing with each a user and with uh, everybody so the more you are creative and the more you are able to think about all the insight that you can think to engage with your audience the better so that's why content is super important and we need to think about the strategy to engage with uh, with our target audience and the last thing that I will say is stop marketing at people but start marketing for people and taking all those insights about the center of interest, about the behavior of the user on, the, on mobile and on Instagram and in stories is super important and it was what will make the brands better. And I think it's also why we are seeing so many entrepreneurs and new brands emerging on Instagram and maybe challenging the bigger brands that maybe are doing a bit less work on understanding how they can uh, create content uh, for the users. So think about that uh, and it will really help you to, uh, to get uh, better at engaging with your, with your users. That's it from me. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, we have 40 minutes more or less for questions. I'm sure you have plenty of questions. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to start. Uh, that's my privilege. Uh, then we'll start by Paris, so get ready if you have any questions. And then we'll move to all the campuses. So, on the campuses as well, uh, in Lille, Sophia Antipolis, and Belo Horizonte, if you have, have any, any questions, get ready to ask your question. Um, I've got two questions to start. First one, just to make the link with the future of stories, or with stories. How do you see the future of stories? Because you, Facebook now is doing also stories. Uh, you are doing stories. I'm not going to name competitors who are doing stories as well. How are you going to evolve on the stories to remain um, as a leader on that, on that field? So the first thing um, I would say that I think we've been the first surprise on the rise of stories. And 300 million people, you can think that it's a small number. It's actually a very huge number. And having this uh, growth so uh, fast is actually, for us, a way to uh, challenge ourselves on the ways that we are developing our solution and our product. Um, and one thing that why every platform is starting to do stories is because when you have users that are creating content, and the more users are creating content, the more is actually people spending time and consuming this content and it's also an opportunity for brands. So uh, for us, it will become a key, uh, a key focus and I think it's already and it was already a key focus for last year. So for us, is how can we develop more tools and more creative tools to make sure people are coming back to stories and actually creating the stories using funny way and uh, sharing all those moments and not stopping only to share, you know, this big, like, beautiful picture on their profile. So it will be a big competition, but I think everybody see uh, the opportunity of having people sharing more content because you have less pressure. You have less pressure on the beautiful content that you are sharing on your profile on Instagram. So, and I think it's the same on uh, any other platform. So um, how we are going to still leading I think we have a bit of advance on that. <laughs> we have been learning a lot. Uh, I think that uh, some of the creative tools that we've launched last year, we've learned a lot also uh, in this. And maybe one of the key um, areas that we are going to focus is also the live. We didn't talk a lot about live, but we are seeing a lot of teens spending a lot of time in live. So it's also one of the product in story that we will be focusing a lot. Okay. Second question, more personal maybe. Uh, you had the chance to work for Facebook, now Instagram. Uh, okay, belonging to the same group, if I can call it like this, but still different culture, I can imagine. How, how do you see the difference between working for Facebook and now Instagram? Good question. So when I joined Facebook, it was really a startup. It was in 2010. So my parents, when I said that I was moving to Dublin to join Facebook, they were like, oh, well, what are you doing to do at Facebook? Like, what, like, what, like, you have a job at Facebook, like what kind of job? So I'm thinking that I was, I don't know, liking pictures on Facebook, no. 
mum, it's not my job, so I was already looking after brands and how brands can actually develop their presence on Facebook and how they can use our media solution, so advertising, because the business model of uh, Facebook is the same for Instagram, is uh, the advertising business. So how they can use our solution to target the audience. So at that time, I think it was a very, um, like it was in a startup mode, and I still have the feeling that on Instagram we are still in this startup mode. So I think that uh, it was very uh, close by. Now, of course, Facebook <coughs> has gone. There are a lot of different solutions. There are many people uh, working uh, at Facebook. So what I like at Instagram is having still this startup culture. We are a very small team. Globally, we are 600, mil uh, 600 people, not million, 600 people. So for a company that is looking after 800 million uh, users, it's actually a very, very small company. Um, so I like this size as well and being able to build everything and being able to come with ideas, defend your ideas. And I still have the feeling that I'm an intrapreneur in this uh, group. So it's maybe the small difference that uh, I have with uh, Facebook uh, today. Okay. Who wants to ask the first question in the audience? Okay. I'm going to give you the microphone so that everybody can hear you. Thank you. Um, so I'm Ségolène and actually I'm working currently for Louis Vuitton at the social media team. So Instagram and sorry, the social media is uh, my core business at the moment. So I can confirm that Instagram is uh, one of them is the most important actually social network that we are working on and we invest a lot in that. Um, my question was about lives. I wanted to know if you because you didn't talk that much about it and it's uh, and I wanted also to, to to tell people that the live of the fashion show of Louis Vuitton is running right now on Instagram. <laughs> so you can have right. a look just follow Louis Vuitton. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I would like to know what are going to be the next, uh, maybe, uh, evolutions or beta, if you're going to do beta, if you're going to... So, uh, the, big, uh, the big focus for us is to understand better how people are using live. When you're using like, live, um, you have the privilege to become at the top uh, of the story tray. So, it's giving you also an opportunity to re-engage maybe with people that didn't see your brand for... Uh, a while and so going back to your uh, account so it's a great way to be discovered um, and we are trying to think about also how our users are using it and what I was saying is like teens are using it a lot so that's why we are also thinking about how we can bring more tools so for example now you can invite someone to share your live it was not possible before but now you can uh, share your screen and share uh, this space with someone else and I think we will be thinking more and more about tools that can make this space a bit more creative. One thing that we won't change at the moment is actually to do a live with a mobile and not with uh, some um, professional uh, materials that you can do on Facebook on other platform. And one of the reasons, and that's why it's a bit different than other platform, we want to keep this kind of exclusive content. And the content that you will take with a mobile is very different uh, than the content that we, you will take with a professional material. So we want to keep having this uh, kind of different content, so that's why we will uh, keep uh, doing live with, uh, with mobile, even if I know, <laughs> especially for a luxury brand like Louis Vuitton, that they're asking for more robust solution to be able to have uh, like greater quality when they are doing live. Talking about live, I forgot to mention that we are live on Facebook since the very beginning, so we can say hello here. Uh, any, any other question? Oh, uh, we move. Sorry. Okay, so I have to. You want me to <laughs> do some sports? Sports. <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is Morgan. I'm from Club Med. Uh, my qu uh, yes. <laughs> also on Instagram. We love Club Med. <laughs> my question is: um, It's a real issue uh, for brands to identify uh, fake uh, influencers with fake likes, fake followers. Does Instagram uh, plan to? I don't know, change its API or something to solve this issue? Yes, so we're not changing the API, but we have a team really focusing on that. The thing that is uh, tough with uh, fake followers is actually, let's say, companies or hackers that are um, creating a batch of thousand and thousand uh, hundred of um, 
uh, fake followers. And so for our mission, like the way that we're approaching it is not to remove one by one the fake followers, but finding um, like the right IP and trying to identify who is at the source to be able to, in one way, like uh, suppressing uh, everything. So it's already in, uh, like we're already working on this. We are seeing big batch of fake followers being uh, removed. But unfortunately for us and for the brands and for our users, we still have these hackers everywhere in the world that are trying to do this because they are making money because they are users or they are sometimes brands that are paying to get fake followers. My advice would be never buy fake followers because even if it can help you, you think in a short term, when we are going to remove those fake followers, it will be very tough. And I've already seen some brands being in a very panic mode because they got a batch of uh, followers disappearing because it was fake followers. So uh, we are working on this. We know that it's not an ideal solution, but I think that this year will be more and more robust on being able to, uh, to delete this. Well, we've seen on Twitter recently they, they removed a lot of fake followers and we see some brands with audience decreasing a lot. Uh, maybe time, and we come back to Paris after, don't be, don't be afraid. Uh, maybe with, with Belo, I don't know if you can hear us and if you can ask a question. Geneviève, are you with us? Yes, we can hear you, and of course we were very interested by this presentation. We have two questions here. Let's start. Yes, hello, Morgan from Belo Zonde. So during the presentation, you speak a lot about uh, doing business with uh, business for Instagram, help them to grow their community. So it's a good uh, way to use Instagram, but are you aware that a lot of people, like a uh, young generation, got a lot depressed by uh, this uh, social media. So are you just uh, trying to grow your business with business, or are you are also uh, or, uh, aware of uh, the trouble you can make by your, uh, your platform? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> yes. No, no, but it's a good question. So first thing that I will say on the brands, of course, you have some brands that are trying to grow their community, but my main point with this um, presentation was more about how can you support some business objectives. And actually, most of the examples that you have seen are advertising or content that is redirecting your audience to your website to make some uh, purchases or going to a boutique. So if I have a recommendation for brand, it will be not to focus only about growing your follow, like your community member. It's better for you to actually invest in content creation to actually redirect your people to buy your product. So it's how do we uh, help those brands uh, to use Instagram like any other media platform. So when you have a strategy using print, when you have a strategy using TV, when you have a strategy using outdoor uh, media, it's exactly the same as how Instagram today, because we have uh, the people that are here, how do you use and how do you integrate Instagram in your overall uh, marketing uh, strategy and marketing campaign? Now you're right, I think that, the, I don't know if it's a problem or not, and I'm not a specialist about um, community and everything that are uh, doing with uh, teens. I'm much more specialized in what we're doing with brands. But uh, yes, you have some teens and you have maybe the young generation that are super focusing on uh, becoming famous and maybe using Instagram <coughs> or other platforms to uh, try uh, to uh, get community members. And I think that we need to make them understand that it's not only like, what we cannot not say is like, yes, there are some teens that are super uh, popular and become famous and they are able to make a living uh, with them, but with that, but we don't know how long it will last. So our work is to make sure that not everybody is thinking that you can become uh, successful and we are not actually working with influencers or with uh, teens to make this happen. That's why we are a very small team. We are only three working at Instagram in France, so it's a small team. Um, but we are also showing different stories about uh, the teens. So for example, you have a lot of teens that are entrepreneurs and that are using Instagram to launch their business. And this, I think it's a great story about also how can we encourage and how can we support teens that have different projects. We can also speak about these teens that have a big passion and they are able to uh, interact uh, with um, people that are, I don't know, in the dancing uh, community or that they are, um, I don't know, in the sports community or different things that they are able to connect and to develop uh, their presence. So uh, it's one of our big uh, focus to be able to 
not only encourage people to grow their community, like their following member, but more on what uh, it can bring uh, to them. I don't know if you know uh, the account 12 février. It's actually a girl uh, that during um, the carnival in Nice, like she was uh, smoking a cigarette and she got her, like the smoke of her cigarette on her um, uh, costume and she got burned unfortunately and it has been a very horrible uh, experience uh, for her. And uh, she was uh, saying that, uh, so she was 16 at that time and she was saying that Instagram, being able to share slowly a few of uh, her injuries and may, like being able to talk about her recovery, help her to share and to actually share the story with different people that supported her <coughs> and she's becoming uh, to gain a more, um, like she regained some <coughs> trust in, uh, and confidence in herself and now she's a fitness girl, um, she's actually kind of a superhero for a lot of people uh, on Instagram and people that have been uh, having the same kind of, um, of uh, like uh, leading this kind of uh, event and so she's helping those guys, maybe sometimes she's helping also people that are sick uh, to be able to recover this confidence. So we also have, you know, this kind of good stories about people that actually sharing their stories with communities, helping them to regain uh, confidence and to be able to uh, feel better. So, I mean, there are so many different uh, ways of using Instagram, but uh, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, just if I can just add think because uh, maybe I think small business is harder for them to grow on, uh, on Instagram because uh, are the bigger business have much money to got sponsor uh, media on, on Instagram. Do you think small business uh, can, uh, can have the chance to to grow their community on, uh, on Instagram without a huge budget of uh, advertising. And uh, that would be my last question. And I'm going to say to Roman from Paris. Thank you for this question because actually I think it's a very pertinent question. Um, over the, like, all the business that are on Instagram, most of them, they are SMB. So they are uh, small and, and medium uh, companies. And if they are, like, you need to think that when you are an entrepreneur or when you are a small company, you don't have time because you have to do everything. Your marketing, you sell the product, you are CEO, you are doing the administration, you are doing so many things. So uh, if you take the time to actually be on Instagram, it's because directly you see the results. And the fact that we have been focusing a lot on small businesses and doing this uh, Salon des Entrepreneurs for France is because we are seeing Instagram being and becoming one of the top pl platforms when we are talking about uh, business results. And you're right, I think not every uh, SMB today are doing advertising, but only developing uh, their audience on Instagram because they are sharing not only their product, but in stories they will uh, uh, show the way that they are uh, creating their product, they are maybe sharing what's going uh, great and what's, uh, like what's not going well in their company. Like they, have, they are sharing so many content. That is to, uh, to talk about the DNA of their company they are able to really federate a community and to um, uh, get some loyalty also from uh, their uh, from their community and from their clients. So actually, most of the business that are on Instagram are small and uh, medium businesses. So it's a very big opportunity for them. And again, one of the biggest challenges that small businesses have is to be discovered. You can have the best product, but if nobody knows about that, it's super hard. And uh, being like if you are, I don't know, in the uh, I don't know if you are in uh, Sofia Antipolis uh, and you want to reach uh, not only a French user, like French clients, but you want uh, to actually uh, launch a product in Brazil and you want to launch uh, uh, products in Canada or in any, uh, anywhere else. There are not a lot of platforms that is actually allowing you to do that. Uh, and so these uh, small uh, businesses uh, with Instagram, they have the opportunity to have an international audience as well and be able to export a lot of their products. Okay, since we mentioned Sophia Antipolis, now let's move to Sophia Antipolis. Uh, Marielle, if you are with us, any question in Sophia Antipolis? Yes, we have one to speak out. So my question is, uh, is it possible to uh, increase the reach of our posts organically uh, and are hashtags still relevant on Instagram? Because I heard 
recently that they not? Yes, so um, of course, hashtag are a cool way to reach your um, your reach, but I would say that you need to be a bit more specific on how you use your hashtag. So I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of people are using hashtag, but they are using generic hashtag. And those hashtags, they are used by everyone because they think that you will uh, add some, uh, some reach. So the strategy here, it's more to do a bit of work on finding what is a hashtag that will help you to reach the community of people that you want to reach. So for example, if you love the vegan food, if you put hashtag vegan food, you will have so many people using this. So you won't actually uh, being able to target the right people. But if you use the hashtag what vegan eat, here you have the right hashtag that will really reach the vegan community. And so you will be discovered by this community that might engage uh, with your post. So it's a bit of work, but if you are doing this well to engage with uh, your audience, you will have very, very strong results uh, on, a, on your organic post. Okay, uh, do, you have a, do we have a second question in Sofia Antipolis? <laughs> No, I think we're good. <laughs> okay, so we'll move to the north of France, Lille. Audrey, any question in Lille? Benoit? Yes. From, from Bello, we have still German who wanted to ask a question, but. Oui. Let's ask, let's say first Lille. I'll I, I, go to Lille and I'll come back to Bruno after. Traveling very fast. Lille, Lille we, we can't hear you, so I don't know if well, you are. Well, question. Yes. So, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Mikael, and I was just wondering about the future about Instagram. Into, my question in fact, is divided into two things. For the future of Instagram, maybe about SEO. Will there be a new way to optimize the search engine? So maybe with hashtag or different processes, how it will be improved through the years. And secondly, it's also about uh, the ranking. Will there be new ways to, new tools that Instagram will be developing, maybe a new insight for the future? So what could be, to your insight, to your opinion, the future about the application? Yes, um, so thank you because I think it's a very uh, good question. What we are seeing on Instagram is actually a lot of people that are going to the explore uh, tab. So you know where you can discover content and when you can do some search uh, with hashtag or search of people. And every day we have more than 100 million people that are actually going to this tab. So people on Instagram, they are not staying only on their feed, they are not staying only on stories, they are going to uh, accounts and they are also going to the explore tab. So, of course, in the future, it's opening so many opportunities to develop things. So it could be SEO, it could be so many different things. The only thing that you need to have in mind for the moment is we are still a very, very small team. So when I was seeing 600 people uh, working at Instagram, it's including, of course, engineers, marketing team, um, uh, the people working on the communication, the, the team working on the community, and the team working with brands. So it's very, very small team um, uh, globally. So we make some priorities. And for the moment, the big priority is stories. So we are working a lot on stories. And if um, I will uh, uh, think more about brands, we're also uh, thinking more about how we can make uh, Instagram a better business platform for them. So for example, I don't know if you heard that um, we have launched shopping solution in the US. So the fact that um, brands can tag product on uh, a post and uh, people can discover more content about this product. So these kind of solutions are still the priority and for the moment we won't go in all those areas that are more complicated and we still have time to develop uh, those solutions. Okay, so we cross the ocean back to Brazil. Geneviève, the take one question. <coughs> yes, Shama. Hello, and thank you for your presentation. I was wondering if you could give some example of strategic KPIs that companies can use to measure the impact of their action on the platform, and also if you provide them with ready to use dashboards, scorecards, or other tools to make the data analysis easier and faster, faster for them. So I want to make sure that I understand your question. You were talking about what are the main KPIs that businesses are 
uh, measuring is okay. Yes, so of course, like we are trying to align with the same KPIs that they would um, uh, measure in any other platform or uh, solution. So if you have some brand objectives, it will be maybe about uh, the reach, the ad recall with um, brand awareness. So we are doing studies with uh, third party like Nielsen, for example, to be able to uh, measure the success of their branding campaign. When we have uh, some uh, clients that are more uh, focusing on performances, it will be more about the traffic going to their website, it will be the number of applications downloaded, it will be about some uh, conversion and what are the conversion happening on the website. So. Um, if you are an advertiser, you will be able to have uh, and to use the Facebook pixels that you put on your website to measure all those things. And of course, you will have all the dashboard that will show you the results. So it's where we are using the Facebook ecosystem to actually plug all the insights. And when you are doing campaigns, you have all these results and all those dashboard to help you uh, see what are the results of, uh, of uh, your campaign and your, present your presence on Instagram. So uh, you have all those dedicated to them. If you are like if you are using the platform only in an organic way, so not doing paid content on Instagram, um, and if you want to have access to some stats, you need to transform your account in a business account because today a business can have like a user account, but if they want to have access to stats and to better understand how people are engaging with their content and uh, how they are driving some uh, traffic to their website, for example, you have to have a business account. So you have to transform it. But you have access to all this data. Okay. Do, do we have, before, before going back, coming back to Paris, we have more questions in Sofia or in Lille? Yes, uh, Julie, hi. We have a question from Sergei, from Sofia, and actually it's from India. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the question I want to ask is, uh, there's a lot of confusion how, how someone can get their account verified on Instagram. So could you, could you tell us how, how we can get our account verified? <laughs> yes, I think I receive maybe thousands of requests per day. I'm not in charge, don't send me this verified account request. Um, everything is managed uh, through the US. There is less than 0.01% of accounts, uh, people or businesses that are verified. One of the main reasons is, was like first for celebrities, because a lot of accounts were fan accounts. And when the celebrities was going to Instagram, like a user, when they want to follow, they didn't know what was the official account. So we make this verified, um, uh, this verified uh, certification to help user to actually follow the right account. And I give you an example, we are talking about the luxury, then talk about the Chanel. Chanel official, like the, the account from Chanel is Chanel official, and one of the reasons, and it's certified of course, but they wanted to have a Chanel, but Chanel is the name of a girl on Instagram, and she had created her account before. So when you are uh, writing Chanel, uh, it was hard at the beginning, beginning for users to follow and to find the right account. So that's why we use the certification to make sure that people know which account uh, they are looking for and how it can help. Them. But um, uh, if you have a, a, a demand, we are working to have an external formula online that everybody could access and do their, uh, their request. And like this, I will receive less demand on my account. I suspect I send you an email as well. Uh, okay, in Lille, any, any question from Lille? No more questions. No, okay. So I've got plenty to manage myself on my own because I've got SMS, I've got tweets, I've got everything. Uh, two questions. First one, more personal. Uh, can you tell us more about your personal career and how you, you make the right choice to move from one company to another? Yes, so maybe I can come back even before Facebook because one thing that maybe you didn't mention is before Facebook. The thing that I was doing... I know what you were doing, but I didn't mention. <laughs> during six months after being graduated, I've been actually working for Hilti. I don't know if you know Hilti, but it's a, a building... Like, they are selling building construction materials. So I was selling drillers <laughs> and uh, this kind of material. So nothing with marketing and nothing uh, with um, internet, let's say like this. And um, uh, I was doing this because one of the reasons I finished my, uh, my um, uh, diploma, like I did a six months of uh, exchange in Hong Kong, so HKUST. 
And my brother had a very big accident, a motorbike bike accident, so I decided to go home and to be near him. So I took the first job that I could uh, find. And I've uh, had some friends at um, uh, Schema that were working at Hilti, so I did the interview, I got this, and I was doing this. And even if it's an amazing company, I mean, in my mind and in my dreams, I was maybe not thinking that I will sell drillers all my life. So one day I have a friend who said, hey, there are some opening, uh, like an opening job in Dublin for Google or for Facebook. You should, you should uh, check what's happening. So um, I went to Facebook on the internet uh, website and I just sent my resume and an Irish girl, like the HR, just called me back and say, hey, Juju, yes, we received your CV, so we'd love to have an interview. So I say, yes. So I prepared myself. I don't have a very big uh, English level, and at that time it was even worse. And when you have someone calling you by phone with an Irish accent, I don't know if you know Irish, I love my Irish friends, but at the beginning, it was very hard for me to understand them. So I've tried to understand what she was asking me as a question. And I was like, yeah, what you've done at Nike? I was like, Nike, okay. I was answering something about Nike, about my internship. Then she was talking about Disney, so I was trying to answer the question about Disney, but I couldn't really understand. So I was knowing that I didn't do my interview very well. So I just told her, hey, but you know, this weekend, I'm actually in Dublin, so maybe I could meet the French manager and have a direct interview with him. Maybe it will be easier. And she was like, mm. I'm not sure. Um, I will call you back. I need to check. And I was really insisting. But she didn't uh, mention anything. So this was on the Tuesday. Wednesday, no news. Thursday, she called me back and she said, yes, it's OK. I got an interview with you with a French manager in Dublin on Friday night. <laughs> my face, I was like, cool. At the same time, like, oh my god, I need to find a plane. I need to find a place to stay. So I just buy my flight because, of course, I didn't have any uh, weekend plan there. But I got my flight, uh, so I was living uh, in Lyon, so Lyon, Dublin. The afternoon, I take my flight. It's starting snowing. So I arrived late in Dublin. My interview got cancelled. So I have to bargain again to get an interview on the Monday morning. So I spent the entire weekend there. And I got this meeting with um, the, the French manager and then with the European manager. And one of the questions they were asking me was like, why do you think you should be uh, hired for this position? You never sell ads, you never uh, had like a marketing experience um, uh, in, a, in your career. And I was like, you know, if I've been able to sell drillers, I will learn how to sell ads and how to make some marketing campaign. So please hire me. And it worked. So I was super uh, lucky, I would say, but also it's like, how can you make sometimes your own luck and trying to push to get uh, the best opportunities. So for me, it, uh, it has been such a big learning that I'm always trying even internally uh, at Facebook or at Instagram to provoke this opportunity and to make sure that if you want something, you go for it and you try a different way to, uh, to get it uh, done. Okay, interesting. Second question, um, somebody is asking about what the Instrapreneur event is and if there is a new edition in 2018 plan. Yes. So, uh, Instapreneur is actually a French ID. So, with uh, my two other colleagues, we were thinking about how we can celebrate entrepreneuria in France, but entrepreneuria that is happening on Instagram because it's a very specific thing that we're seeing on the French market. So, we come up with the idea that Entrepreneurs are also inspiring community for any user that wants to launch their project or wants to launch their company uh, and they want to learn a bit more about Instagram. So this year, in, uh, last year in June, we created a, a one-day uh, event. It was at Carreau du Temple in Paris where we invited 50 brands, so 50 Instapreneurs, to showcase their product. And so the, like uh, anyone, uh, like the public could come and to um, either meet with you, those entrepreneurs or to buy their products. But we also organize uh, four different uh, conferences to be able to share experiences and some advice. So one conference was about the Made in France and how French brands are actually exporting their business and reaching international audience. One conference was about the, wo the women that are an, uh, like entrepreneur and a woman entrepreneurship. 
One of our co um, conference was about the teens and teens entrepreneur, like how they are uh, launching their business on Instagram. And the last one was how do you transform your passion into business? Because we are seeing a lot of people that are actually starting on Instagram, sharing, I don't know, they are doing um, uh, knitting, like tricot, uh, on Instagram, sharing some pictures, and starting to have a big community, and then they just decided to launch this as a proper business. So we were sharing a lot of um, um, examples on that, and we have all our entrepreneurs sharing their experience. So this year, we are thinking about doing it again. One of the reasons is, so it was a huge success. Everybody was uh, talking about that and wants to actually uh, do a second version. But our global team is actually asking us to help other markets <laughs> now to do it. So we've helped uh, Germany to uh, do it, the UK, Indonesia. We have seen this event happening in uh, Mexico. One is happening in Brazil. So we are in the process of more helping international launch. And we will be thinking on when we are doing this second version of uh, the Instapreneur in France. Okay. okay, before going back to campuses outside Paris, anybody has a question here in Paris? Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I cannot throw the microphone. <laughs> I, I will repeat it if I can, if you can say it loud. Yes, I'm talking about, uh, like I have experience experience in paid marketing, in AdWords and uh, Facebook. So I'm wondering if you can share your experience in terms of CTR and CTC, uh, in terms of so if I spending 20 euros in the fashion niche, uh, in the page and Instagram, so what was the CTR and CTC and engagement uh, for your students? Okay, so uh, it's a very technical question. <laughs> so you worked uh, in AdWords for two years, I understood, and, and you had the question about CTR and CTO in, uh, in Instagram if you invest money. Yes, so maybe I cannot answer your question right now because it will really depend on your target audience, the kind of content that you're doing, how do you measure that. So, of course, uh, when you are doing campaigns, you can have straight away all the results about your CTR, about your CPC, your CPM, but also your conversion rate. And I would really think about more that what is your objective and being able to, uh, to compare those results. And you can do it. Uh, Instagram versus Facebook right away if you want and then compare it to other platform but I mean we don't when we are not sharing uh, average CTR or average CPC or average CPM on the platform because it's evolving like every day and, and your CPM will be also depending on you know the different industry like the industry that you are part and the way that you are doing uh, your campaign so uh, it's my biggest advice would be try and you can be, be able to compare or I'm sure that uh, online you can also find some uh, some uh, different uh, things and also it depends market by market. CPM and CTR in France will be different than the one in Brazil, the one in India, etc. Et <laughs> yeah, but I just observed that like uh, uh, the fashion niche is very cheaper compared to Facebook uh, compared to the other It's going to increase the price tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if uh, people uh, hear this, but uh, they were. Um, uh, my dear friend here was saying that uh, Instagram was uh, cheaper as a as a platform for CPM or for um, uh, CPC maybe. Mm -hmm. It will de again. I think that for some audience, you will have uh, better performances and lower CPM or uh, lower CPC. Uh, and it can be because, I don't know, you have a bigger audience and you have less maybe competition and you are able uh, to have uh, this kind of uh, price and performances versus other platform. But it could depend also on different uh, audiences. So it will very vary and it will vary also when you're doing uh, uh, campaigns in your Instagram feed versus what you're doing in stories because you could do ads in stories as well. So every different format have different performances. So it's where we're encouraging brands to actually try, use, and compare to be able to do some test and learn and improve their performances. Okay. Any, any question from Brazil, Sophie Antipolis or Lille? I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, maybe one from me. Uh, Julie, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting presentation. And really, all our students here in Brazil were very interested. And so, 
If you had only one advice to give to these students from everywhere, what would it be? Um, I would say that um, maybe one of the, f the, the, the advice that I was giving also to people who worked with me in my team was never think that when you're applying for a job or when you're in company and you want to do a project or whatever, don't think that there are limits or because you are not checking all the box that you cannot go for it. And for me, it has been so key. Like even for this job at Facebook, they were requiring five years of experience and I had six months <coughs> doing uh, selling drillers. And they hired me at the end. So I think that it's okay to not check all the boxes of all the requirements. But if you're passionate, if you are able to maybe do the extra work of coming and maybe presenting a project and really think about what you want to push, it will help you uh, to, uh, to get a different job or to get a, a lot of different opportunities. So for me, it always helped me to uh, get there. Singapore, first time I've applied to be part of the, uh, the, the team uh, building, uh, like uh, launching the new office uh, in Singapore, I didn't get it. I was in final against a girl from uh, the US. I didn't get it, I was super, super sad. Uh, six months later, they opened another job. Like, uh, I applied for it, and instead of just passing my interview, I actually come back with an entire project design. Like, I presented my project, and I've been able to be successful with that. So, how can we think about sometimes just to the bit bo like the, the booster, like uh, doing the extra miles that will actually help you uh, to get uh, to get where you want to uh, to be? Okay, question. You are on Instagram, aren't you? <laughs> I know you. Uh, hello, my name is Crystal. I'm a student in Schema. I'm, I'm a little bit like really on Instagram. Uh, I had two, uh, three questions, uh, like yeah, daily. But uh, I had three questions. My first one was, um, what did you learn from school? From <laughs> just want to know. Uh, the second question was, um, how does your daily uh, work day look like? Like, yes. what do you do? And I'm not looking for one, but I wanted to know <laughs> if you were taking inter interns uh, in Paris. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Uh, so first question, what did I learn from school? A lot, of course. Uh, of course, I did uh, my marketing uh, lesson uh, with uh, amazing teacher that I hear. Um, and I think what I've learned a lot also is actually, so I was part of this student association. And what I've learned from it was actually how can you start building projects that I was not doing before. I was a lot into sports before, but it was not about uh, working with other people, uh, being able to actually start a project from scratch. So, for example, with the Sports Association, we've launched, at the time, the Seram Beach Session, that maybe now it's like the Schema Beach Session, or I don't know, but this uh, volleyball and rugby uh, and foot, uh, like beach soccer uh, events. And building this, trying to find the fund and the budget, being able to get 20 schools coming to Sofia Antipolis uh, during an entire weekend, find the hotels, uh, do the party, like everything. It was such a big project that actually you are learning also on marketing, um, comms, uh, I don't know, administrative uh, stuff. So all the things that you can do in student association, I think is really helping uh, you and it's helping you also to sell yourself when you are looking for an internship. And those things helped me to get an internship uh, for Mac and Ericsson, which is an advertising um, uh, uh, agency. Uh, it, it helps me to, get, to uh, be um, uh, in a marketing position at Nike France. Like all those things help yourself, like help you to sell yourself also uh, during those internships, and you are learning a lot from those internships. So internships for me has been also a big help in my career because it's helping you to also know where you want to work, where you don't want to work, what you like to do, what you don't like to do, and helping you to maybe change a bit of your mind of what you were thinking you would be uh, doing um, later in your life. And so to jump to the internship uh, questions, 
So Instagram is a very uh, small team at the moment. We don't have a lot of uh, position, even in internship for the moment, we haven't opened any internship position, but we are part of the Facebook group. So we are in the same office as Facebook, and Facebook has actually some um, uh, open position for interns. And when you are an intern uh, working for Facebook anyway, you will be working on some Facebook stuff, but also on Instagram stuff. So the best is to go to the uh, website, the career website of Facebook. You go on the Paris page, because there is a specific uh, location page, and here you will see all the different uh, internship and open position for like a um, uh, CDI, CDI. Permanent, uh, job. permanent job, <laughs> <laughs> where you can apply directly. So it's the best way for you to apply and to uh, to um, get an opportunity. Of course, so you know that in one month I will be in the maternity leave. When I will come back uh, in September, if there is any opportunities and internship opportunities, of course I will share it with uh, Schema and making sure that the position is open and uh, everybody knows about it. One last question, the very last one, okay, you're the lucky guy. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. I'm Walid. Uh, I'm from Schema Lille, so hi Lille. <laughs> uh, thank you for being he here, first of all. We're lucky to have you. And uh, before asking my question, I just want you to know that I created my Instagram account today. Ah, uh, really? Do you follow, thank do you. you. Uh, no, not yet, but okay. uh, soon enough. <laughs> and, uh, and so I don't know much about Instagram, but I'm very curious. And uh, you said earlier that you weren't working with influencers. But today I see more and more companies uh, who are looking for influencers and uh, they are asking many services uh, for uh, public publicity agencies. And I, just, I was just asking myself, uh, why do these companies uh, not go to Instagram for, uh, for looking for influencers? So you said that you don't work with, it, with them. Uh, why? Uh, because you may have, um, I think, a lot of data about every Instagram profile, so you may be the best uh, people to advise these companies. So, yeah, why? Yes, so one Thank of you. the reasons that we are not working directly with them is because we don't want to privilege one influencer or one community member versus another. So if we start to, to recommend influencer to brands, it means that we are making choices and we don't think it's fair for the entire community to have some people that will be reco like recommended by us um, and we want to keep like to be super fair with our entire community so there are specific agencies it's their business model they are working with influencers their portfolio of influencers like they will they will be managing uh, stars or celebrities and so brands if they want to include in their marketing strategy the fact that they are working with some influencers they will work with those agencies to get recommendation. But us, we don't want to be directly involved in this to really stay fair. Um, so there are a lot of solutions. There are, of course, in France, but you have also some companies that prefer to work with some tech companies that are helping actually some community <coughs> members like us to create content based on a brief. And so you can content, create content for those brands. So there are many different uh, solutions and strategies that brands that can use to work with a content creator, so influencer or community member that are super creative and doing the right things. Thank you. I would like to thank you once again, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank, <laughs> would like to thank, thank also students on the, on the other campuses. Thank you for being with us. And just before leaving, because uh, some of you might want to watch football tonight, I don't know. Yes. Some of you, I guess. Uh, we've got a gift for you on behalf of Schema Lunai. Cedric, please. Okay. Oh. He lost the gift. I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um. Wow. <laughs> okay, so oh, we, no. we know you can't drink now, but that's to celebrate the baby. I will have to celebrate this. I'm actually looking for the day I will be able to celebrate this again. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. And have a good evening. Thank you very much.